topic that we are going to discuss. Lord, enlighten our minds and let your love be upon us. Lord God, may you extend your divine wisdom to our speaker so that he would be able to impart effectively his God-given knowledge to all of us. May this meeting bring success by your grace. All this we pray through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. May I invite Dr. A. Mary Imelda J. Seeley, convener of this webinar, Head and Associate Professor of Chemistry, to welcome and introduce the resource person. Good morning to all. On this special morning, may I take privilege to welcome and introduce the eminent personalities of the day. I feel honored to invite the resource person, Dr. Pichaymani Birakumar, Research Associate Professor of Chemistry, National Taiwan University, Taiwan. He has got rich research experience in a short span of time after completing PhD from MK University, Madurai in the year 2012. He has gained professional experience postdoctoral researcher and research assistant professor and now as research associate professor at National Taiwan University. He has published 56 research papers and review articles with highly reputed journals. Professor has contributed his subject knowledge for some chapters in books. He has expertise as reviewer for many journals. His area of interests are preparation of nanomaterials, green catalysis, sensors, etc. Our young and energetic research person has consented to deliver a lecture on porous carbon-based nanocomposite for energy storage and sensing. On behalf of the management, staff, and students of chemistry and the participants of the two-day international webinar, I heartily welcome you, sir. It's a great pleasure to welcome Reverend Sister Dr. S. J. Sirani, principal of our college, who is the striving force to arrange this webinar. On behalf of the gathering, I extend a hearty welcome to you, dear sister. My heart is overwhelmed in joy to welcome Reverend Sister Dr. B. J. Queensley Jayanti, Secretary of JAC, and Mother Superior of St. Anne's community, who has been the source of inspiration to all our endures. On behalf of the participants of the webinar, I warmly welcome you, dear sister. It's my bounded duty to welcome the participants, the faculty members, research scholars, scientists from nationwide and abroad. On behalf of the management and on, on my own behalf, I happily welcome all the enthusiastic participants and I wish you all the very best. I am happy to welcome Reverend Sister Dr. Shanta Mary Josita, Head of Computer Science, JAC, and the team of technicians. Welcome you, Sister. I am happy to welcome Reverend Sister Dr. Reverend Sister Sahaya Linus, the organizing secretary, Sister Johnny Dathis, and all my dear colleagues of JAC, and special welcome to you, my dear students. Welcome one and all, and I wish you all a great day. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. May I invite Reverend Sister Dr. S. J. Surani, Principal, to bestow her blessings and felicitation. Am I audible? Yes, Sister. Respected resource person of the webinar, 
Dr. Pichamani Veera Kumar, Research Associate Professor of Hemistry, National University of Daiwan, Dr. Mail Murhan, Assistant Professor of Hemistry, Madurai Kamaraj University, Dr. Mary Imalda Jaisili, Head of the Department of Chemistry and Convener of this webinar, Sister Saha Elenas, Assistant Professor of Chemistry and Organizing Secretary of this webinar, other faculty members of the Department of Chemistry, HOD, Sister Josita, Computer Science, dear participants of this webinar, a very pleasant morning to every one of you. Today and tomorrow, we are going to listen to two lectures, one on nanocomposites and uh, other on COVID-19. Nanocomposites are materials that incorporate nano-sized particles into a matrix of standard material. Because of the enhancement in different properties, nanocomposites have high added value applications in fields such as energy conservation, storage, sensing, biomedical applications such as tissue engineering, drug delivery, cellular therapies, etc. so on. Dear participants, I hope the first lecture of this webinar will make us understand the basics of nanocomposites and their usage for storage of energy and sensing applications. And nowadays, during this lockdown period, we talk and hear much about COVID-19 and its dangerous effects also. I have, I hope the second lecture will give you a thorough knowledge on the chemical and biological aspects of COVID-19. At this juncture, I congratulate the conveners for uh, selecting a researchable topic as porous carbon-based nanocomposite for energy storage and sensing. And a recent topic as chemical biology of COVID-19. I also appreciate their meticulous efforts in planning and conducting this webinar in a successful manner. Thank you. May God bless you. Stay home and stay safe. Enjoy this day. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, sister. Yes. May I invite Reverend Sister Dr. P.J. Queensley Jayanti, Secretary and Mother Superior, to enrich us with good wishes and blessings. Sister Linus, am I audible? Yes, Sister. Warm greetings and salutations to all. It is with great pleasure I wholeheartedly welcome the research people for the day. Dr. Pichemani Veerakumar, Research Associate Professor, National Taiwan University, Taiwan, and Dr. Mail Murugan, Assistant Professor, School of Chemistry, Madurai Kamaraj University, Madurai. With COVID-19 continuously on the slaughter all over the world, this webinar has become the normal. Webinars have indeed become the active source of knowledge dissemination. On this day, I deem it my pleasure to welcome all the participants who are eagerly awaiting to listen to the lectures of these dignified resource person who have amidst us courtesy of this webinar. This precious time we are investing here in will certainly not go in vain. So wise investment of time can be compared to wise informed investments in the bank. Though we might now know when, late in the day, they will repay us heavily for sure. Moving forward, I take this opportunity to congratulate and appreciate Dr. Mrs. Mary Yamada Danasili, HOD, and Associate Professor of Chemistry, 
and convener of this webinar and sister sahaya leenas assistant professor of chemistry organizing secretary for this webinar for putting their effort to organize this webinar for us chemistry as a branch of science ever evolving thus all the chemistry fraternity to enrich and equip themselves with the fabrics of chemistry to the fullest to aid us achieve the same we have amistus dr pichamini veera kumar who will be sharing his insights on porous carbon based nano composite for energy storage and sensing and dr mail murugan will be elucidating on chemical impact of covid 19 i hope that these lectures will have a profound effect on you all dear participants may wise use of these opportunities at your hand and lend your ears with rapt attention to these eminent dignitaries may god be with you and anoint you with the oil of intelligence and wisdom have a good day wish you all the best thank you thank you sister before handing over the session i request request you all to kindly follow the instructions given below for the smooth functioning of the webinar we request the participants to mute all your audio for getting better bandwidth to attend the webinar all queries on the lecture can be posted in the chat box towards the end of the lecture by the resource person doubts will be cleared by the resource person at the end of the session avoid unnecessary chats greetings and com comments during the session participants those who wish to receive e certificates are asked to attend both the days of the webinar feedback form will be provided at the end of the second day session in the chat box after filling the feedback form you will receive the e certificate thank you for your cooperation now the session is hand over to the resource person so may i start now yes yes sir so so thanks for a nice introduction about me it's a warm welcome to all it's a great pleasure to start my research topic so so, so this is my research id and my research address of i am working as a research associate professor department of chemistry national taiwan university this is my email id so my title is based on porous uh, carbon based it's audible uh, it's, it is not audible can you i think okay make it. hello sir okay sir un unmute your yourself sir unmute yourself ah oh. okay now it's okay it 
can be written more audible i think it's okay okay proceed sir so my title is porous carbon based materials uh, based on nano composite for energy storage and sensing so this is the entrance view of uh, national taiwan university so main campus before uh, entering the topic i would like to share some uh, taiwan university and uh, the uh, taiwan country some uh, tourist spots and some special features so this is the uh, map of uh, uh, national taiwan uh, so taiwan map and uh, there are several uh, tourist places there is you can see more specifically uh, the most of the people will visit this this places cks memorial hall and yongmin chen sun moon lake and uh, uh, kaohsiung and waterfalls and this is a taipei taipei city and uh, one of the famous uh, famous tourist places uh, taipei 101 this is a uh, 101 building it has uh, 101 uh, floors is there and this is the fastest elevator uh, in this uh, fastest elevator uh, in the world traveling 60 60.6 km per hour and transporting the passengers from fifth floor to uh, 89th floor is one of the kinest record in the world and meet our team so this is our team people uh, i working under uh, professor king chen lin department of chemistry national taiwan university taipei and also he is working with the uh, another institute institute of atomic and molecular science academy as niga this is our group peoples and another these two professors are uh, collaborators uh, professor chang wing lu uh, is a distinguished professor in working in uh, institute of atomic molecular science academy as niga another professor from uh, national taipei university of technology professor cheng min chen and also i would like to thank to national taiwan university and academia sinica and the funding agency from ministry of science and technology so our group people working in different areas most of the people they working in uh, photo dissociation dynamics and ion imaging and uh, some gas phase kinetics time resolved emission spectroscopy and lipid dynamics another group people working in uh, nano material for metal ion sensor and uh, Uh, toxic substance sensor and nano material for bias sensor and nano material for a uh, catalysis so our field is more, mostly based on uh, material science so outline of our this topic preparation of porous carbon from bio mass natural precursors uh, this prepared uh, porous carbon used for electrochemical sensor and super capacitor and finally we are to share the summary of uh, biomass pyrolysis past present and future so in the past uh, there are several uh, carbon precursors that are available but in the present and future uh, the the carbon prepared from renewable biomass in this figures you can see there are several uh, biomass utilization for the preparation of uh, carbon materials uh, you can see the municipal solid waste animal residues industrial residues and forestry crop residues agriculture crop residues so most of the biological materials uh, derived from living plants and animal it is an organic matter that contains uh, lignocellulose hemicellulose and hydrocarbons phenolic and uh, perfluorol and gasoline mixtures and so on it can be used as a key material for the preparation of uh, activated carbon and this carbon is used for energy storage electronic device fabrication dye sensory solar cell and fuel cell and synthesis of some important uh, natural products so you want to share you want to more details you can uh, search this uh, review article the scaving fuel loop at uh, energy and environmental science 2014 another one uh, journal that is journal of material chemistry 2012 uh, there are uh, several biomass materials used used to sustainable applications and in the past the carbon resources were obtained from and uh, from coal and woods so they are only the carbon powder and activated charcoal it has a less surface area and uh, less porosity 
and uh, the high content of ash. At present, man-made high porous carbon material are used in many areas, including energy storage, purification, photocatalytic activity, carbon fixation, gas storage, a sensor catalysis, and car carbon fuel cells, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So the carbon materials is uh, very important for the nowadays in sustainable applications. What's a porous carbon? Porous carbon is nothing but you have to collect the renewable biomass material and make it uh, make it into carbon. There are several ways to prepare this uh, highly porous carbon. Uh, this figure illustrates that the, we collect the porous carbon from the biomass and uh, carbonization or hydrothermal at high temperature pyrolysis, we get the porous carbon. So this porous carbon is utilized for supercapacitor and electrochemical sensor applications. The porous carbon-based materials received wide attention in the world, in the field of catalysis, sensor, energy storage, and etc. Due to their environmental dignity, high surface area, high electrical conductivity, low cost, and the structural integrity. So sometimes the doping of uh, uh, hetero elements like uh, nitrogen, sulfur, boron, phosphorus to improve the charge storage and the fast electron transfer. So some, some of the composite based, carbon based metal or metal oxide composites have attracted wide attention in electrochemical energy storage and sensor because it is a very easy to preparation and high electric electrocatalytic active sites synergetic effect between the carbon and the metal or metal oxides and fast electron transfer between the carbon and the uh, biomolecules or carbon and the uh, metal oxides so this uh, these features is is helpful for the preparation of activated carbon and this carbon is used for several sustainable applications and how to prepare the activated carbon? You just burn the biomass, it will it convert only the carbon. But we need high porosity, high surface area, say high pore volume. So this physical phenomena is helpful for the uh, sensing electrochemical storage and energy storage applications. So physical and the chemical activation. So there are several methods that are available to synthesize the porous carbon materials, having various shapes, size, and deep and degrees of physical and chemical activation. So what is mean by physical and chemical activation? Physical activation is nothing but in the presence of suitable oxidizing agent like uh, oxygen, carbon dioxide, or water stream, in, at a higher temperature in the passing through in the furnace tube, we get, uh, typically from 600 to 1200 degrees centigrade, we get the highly porous carbon. So in the this is the uh, model equation that is the carbon plus activation agent mixing together in inert atmosphere like uh, uh, argon or nitrogen atmosphere at a high temperature we get the porous activated carbon so this carbon contains a high surface area and high porosity and high pore volume chemical activation agents chemical activations is nothing but it's like uh, our laboratory reagents like uh, potassium hydroxide sodium hydroxide and potassium carbonate and sodium carbonate and zinc chloride, magnesium chloride, and iron chloride. So these salts mix together in a appropriate ratio with our carbon material, followed by carbonization process procedure at high net temperature, in net atmosphere, at high, high temperature, like 600 to uh, 1200 degrees centigrade, we get the uh, highly porous carbon. So this porous carbon material is now ready for further applications. So for, this is the tube furnace setup. So we need to prepare chemical activation or physical activation method. Use this setup in our this uh, setup available in our laboratory. You can see that this is a furnace tube inside. If you put your sample, there is a carbon material inside, and this is a, a carbon dioxide cylinder for physical activation. Uh, chemical activation, we can use uh, metal salts mixed with this carbon at a higher temperature. This here controller is there and. Uh, heating at high temperature the gas flow flowing from inlet to outlet and the further the emitted gas is collected by cooling gas is trapped because this gas is there and the highly uh, uh, organic matter is, is there so this is the furnace setup is available in our laboratory we want to uh, do any uh, you want to do activated carbon preparing the activated carbon so let's get this message to me and we i uh, will uh, we will give offer to you. And chemical activation. So what do you mean by chemical activation? How the uh, porous carbon is, is activated 
and uh, how we can get the porous carbon. So these are these uh, uh, bio biomass resource biomass sources. This uh, uh, biomass resource collected and the carbonization and washing in the first step. Second step is the KOH activation. KOH is, is a chemical, so there's a chemical activation. And the third step is the washing. So initially we have carbonization, we get uh, the carbon. This carbon has no porosity. So we need create the porosity. That's why we need mix with the potassium hydroxide. So after mixing at a higher temperature like uh, 600 to uh, 900 degrees centigrade, uh, the, the potassium is evaluated as uh, potassium or potassium oxide and potassium carbonate. And sometimes this carbon is uh, uh, during heating, uh, heating treatment, it's evaluated hydrogen gas or carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide. So these gases are trapped. And finally, we, uh, we get the composite-like material and washing with the uh, concentrated HCl and the hot water, uh, we remove as uh, the potassium as a potassium chloride and finally we get the porous uh, carbon so this carbon is uh, is better than uh, uh, this carbon because it's a high surface area and high porosity so this uh, porosity is basically for the uh, sensing of molecules or transporting the ions is is, uh, is very faster so this is the uh, carbon lattice this is a bare carbon lattice there is a no porosity that is a intercalation after mixing with this potassium uh, hydroxide, the potassium is intercalated between these two layers of carbon lattice. And after washing this uh, potassium, after washing this potassium hydroxide, we get the porosity of the porosity that is the activated carbon. So this carbon is used for further uh, applications. And there's zinc chloride activation. So what are the possible reaction mechanisms for zinc chloride activation? You can see we collect the biomass carbon. It's only the carbon lattice. Uh, at a particular temperature, we have the aromatization heating. It, it, it goes to charring or aromatization. That means uh, the carbon layers are uh, uh, connected together. And then the zinc chloride is uh, deposited on the surface. It will uh, interact with this uh, zinc 2 plus and the oxygen atoms. And finally, we get the zinc oxide. And this zinc oxide is uh, removed uh, by using a concentrated HCl and is zinc chloride. Finally, we get the porous activated carbon is another method because and the cheap method and uh, at a higher temperature uh, during the heating uh, already i told that the hydrogen gas and carbon monoxide and the carbon dioxide is evolving at a higher temperature finally we get the uh, graphitic carbon with the highly porous uh, structure so later i will show how the porosity and porous uh, shape of uh, uh, carbon materials in the tm image and uh, First, I have prepared that uh, highly porous carbon using the chemical method. So this is the chemical method to prepare a highly porous activated carbon. And this carbon used for uh, sensing applications. Uh, the pyrofluoroclucinol and formaldehyde and one of the polymer, that is a prolic F127, is mixed together in ethanolic solution. And another is the nickel acetyl acetonate in the THF solution because this uh, nickel salt is dissolved in only the organic solvent and they mix together and they, uh, in a particular uh, mix together in a particular hour and in the room temperature it is self induced self self uh, self induced evaporation induced self assembly that is the elisa method and the evaporation this uh, uh, solvent uh, like uh, ethanol and the tso solvent and you get this uh, like a polymeric phase if this polymeric phase contains a nickel 2 plus because the nickel uh, nickel 2 plus present in this polymeric base after scratch and uh, carbon uh, micro degradation at 100 degrees centigrade and carbonization we get the porous uh, carbon material so this porous carbon material containing this nickel 2 plus uh, nickel zero uh, atoms so you can see the thin image of uh, nickel uh, nickel containing the car uh, carbon porous material uh, you can see the single uh, dot that's a black dot indicate for the nickel so after the preparation, uh, chemical preparation, we get the porous carbon material and the characterized using XRD and BET surface area, Raman and, and the TM image. So initially, the material, prepared material is used to characterize the X-ray diffraction pattern. You can see the bare, uh, that is a carbon porous material, bare carbon, without, uh, and uh, nickel, uh, nickel 2 plus doping in different ratio. So I labeled as a nickel CPM1 and nickel CPM2. 
that is a different ratio to so 0.5 and one one weight percentage of nickel two plus. And you can see the nickel peak is emerged in the carbon material. So that indicates its nickel uh, present in this carbon material. So another another thing is uh, porosity. We need to study the porosity studies. That is the uh, surface area measurement. So the bare carbon, that is a CPM, that is a carbon porous material. You can see the high surface area. This is the elevated CA. And nickel, the low product is CPM, that is a somewhat the surface area is reduced because the nickel to nickel atoms are blocked in some pores and reduce the surface area. And further uh, introducing a nickel uh, weight percentage, the surface area is lower. And this is the corresponding the uh, pore diameter. Uh, Profile and another is the uh, Raman uh, Raman shift. There is a Raman studies. Uh, you can see the three uh, comp composites uh, under the, the corresponding uh, peak profiles. And this is the TM image. It's a bare carbon. You can see the uh, the holes is present in the TM image of a bare CPM. And uh, after uh, mixing with the nickel acetyl acetonate and finally we get the nickel composite. You can see the very very fine non fine nanoparticles. That is a a uh, five, 5 nanometer uh, size of uh, uh, nickel 2 plus present in the form is only only the nickel zero not in uh, nickel uh, oxide or uh, other uh, uh, metal oxides and this is the edx spectrum of uh, the corresponding composite and uh, this composite is used for the uh, dye uh, reduction process that is uh, methylene blue and uh, rhodamine blue is reducing uh, reducing using this uh, catalyst. This is the mechanism of uh, uh, how the uh, uh, degradation process will occur during this uh, catalytic. This is the catalyst, and in the, in the first step, the sodium borohydride enter into this uh, reaction mixture. So it's it, it, it's donate uh, hydrogen and and benzene hydrides B2H4. These hydrogen atoms are absorbed on the surface of uh, the catalyst, and uh, methylene blue dye molecules enter in the second second, and then the dye molecule interact with this the proton that is the hydrogen atom, and finally is uh, methylene blue is reduced to methylene blue or or uh, leucomethylene blue. It is a colorless solution. It's come out from the reaction mixture, and uh, likewise the rhodamine B is also entering this same mechanism. Uh, this is the uh, mechanism for the uh, dye degradation process. And another thing is, uh, I use uh, this uh, material for sensing of mercury. Mercury is a very one of the dangerous subs um, substance, toxic substance. We can to detect this uh, uh, mercury using this uh, composite. So we have to collect some uh, fish, uh, fish, some fishes in the local uh, Taiwan market and collect this fish in separate into the skin part and skin part is, is mixed with it, cut into small pieces and they make it as juice this juice for sensing uh, uh, mercury uh, mercury toxic mercury so uh, this composite is used with dual application one is for a dye degradation another is for sensing of toxic metal ions so you can see this figure in uh, uh, cadmium 2 plus lead 2 plus copper 2 plus and mercury 2 plus uh, sensing in simultaneously as well as the individual sensing. So from this figure, you can see the mercury two plus is sensing is more compared to other uh, metal ions. And a real sample test, real sample test means we have to uh, go for practical application. This sensor is uh, really applicable for uh, practical usages or not. So uh, we collect this juice material and put in the electrode in the middle of this juice and uh, so connect the electrochemical setup and uh, study about this mercury sensing. So initially there is a small peak is appeared and finally in uh, mixing with this uh, uh, juice and uh, uh, some amount of mercury, the concentration will enhance this indicates for this sensor is, is uh, uh, good for sensing uh, mercury two plus ions. And this paper was published in uh, uh, this whole work is published in uh, ACS uh, Applied Material Interfaces in 2015. And now go for uh, bio waste materials. So, previously I talked about the uh, prepared carbon material prepared from chemical method. Now, the material is prepared from naturally available biomass. So, agro waste, this is a fruit fields. So, various fruit fields such as a banana, orange, avocado. Watermelon, uh, dragon, and uh, 
mangoes other fields were selected for activated carbons well, mostly the studies based on very low cost easily available and simple processing method stability and so and also potential adjustment for toxic pollutants so you can see several uh, uh, fruit fields are we can eat the inner part and throw out the the waste fields so these fields collected and uh, is used as a key material for the preparation of activated carbon so all fruit fields containing the polar function group the hydroxyl amine and the carboxyl group on the surfaces so which consist of a variety of non starch polysaccharides cellulose hemicellulose and pectin and gums and lignins the role of uh, functional group such as a uh, carboxyl group or hydroxyl group having the lone pair of electron present in the oxygen and a large number of active groups are on the surface so this uh, functional group facilitate the absorption of uh, metal ions in the in the, uh, in the case of fruit peels so i use this uh, fruit peel is a key material for the preparation of activated carbon so this is the schematic illustration application of palladium go for the porous activated carbon material for detection of toxic heavy metal ions in previous case i used the nickel in this case i used the palladium so you, you can see the schematic diagram the pomegranate uh, fruit peels and orange fruit peels collected from the local market and uh, we, you, we eat the inner part and the waste part we can co collected and dried in the sunlight for uh, two to three days after drying this uh, fruit peels they crushed into uh, crushed into powder and you can see this powder and heated in the hydrothermal uh, temperature hydrothermal flask uh, at 200 degrees centigrade mixed with this potassium hydroxide solution and uh, this is the activation process is started and this uh, uh, potassium hydroxide after treatment we get the porous uh, activated carbon and that that means the pac that is a bare uh, bare carbon and if in the case uh, we can use the palladium acetyl acetonate as a precursor why the people are asking why you are using the palladium 2 plus all is an acetyl acetyl acetonate form because it is a complex structure there, uh, there is a no uh, this is a white to formation of palladium oxide and also we can we can get a very very small size particle nanoparticle size and not like that uh, 50 and 100 nanometer in size that's why this precursor is, is only reduced into very very small size below than 10 nanometer or below 5 nanometer range that's why i use this uh, palladium salt after uh, heating at 900 degrees centigrade in a uh, inert atmosphere like a uh, nitrogen gas we get the pd pac 900 that, uh, this composite it used for the electrochemical uh, sensing of uh, toxic heavy metal ions so after the uh, preparation is over uh, this sample is now go for the characterization so the prepared material is good for characterization and good for the application. So initially, I have to test the composite for extra diffraction pattern. You can see I, I use the three different uh, temperature activation, like 700, 800, and 900 degrees centigrade, uh, and measure the uh, extra pattern. There is a no change in the uh, uh, change in the carbon material. After introducing the palladium salt, you can see the palladium uh, phases are uh, emerged from this uh, composite. This indicate for uh, uh, palladium present in this composite and uh, usually measuring the surface area and the Raman spectroscopy and the PGA the thermo thermogrammetric analysis. So this is the basic characterization for the uh, uh, analyzing the structure. And uh, this is the TM image. Uh, you can see the porous uh, activated carbon PEAC. Uh, it's a highly the, the small uh, holes is present. Uh, you can see in the TM image uh, that that is uh, activated in the uh, zinc chloride. For the potassium hydroxide. So this is the bare carbon, and you can see the black dots indicate uh, the palladium nanoparticle inside the uh, porous activated carbon. Uh, this image you can see the five nanometer inch single uh, palladium atom. So this composite is used for application of sensing toxic metal ions. And uh, uh, likewise, the previous uh, report I use uh, the same uh, cadmium, lead, copper, and the mercury sensing and simultaneously or individually and also this composite sensing for practical application i use for the milk sample for studying how much the quantity of uh, mercury present in our uh, uh, daily drinking milk sample in uh, taiwan and uh, the the bare the bottom one is the null without any adding the milk sample after my 10 microliter 50 micro 20 microliter with mixing this metal ion the peak will uh, enhance that indicates for 
this material is sensing uh, uh, this composite is sensing for cadmium 2 plus lead 2 plus and copper and mercury 2 plus materials so this uh, this is a, a, a simultaneous and individual uh, sensing of uh, uh, metal, ion, metal ions in different concentration and this uh, work was published in ACS Applied Material in the same journal in 2016 uh, in American Chemical Society. And dead leaves. Next is going for uh, uh, leaves derived carbon for uh, uh, leaves, uh, sustainable application. Dead leaves are highly carbonous in nature and they mainly compress large amount of uh, hydrocarbons, uh, hydrocarbons and lignin material. It is an ideal source for the porous carbon synthesis. It primarily consists of uh, carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen elements, which are present in the functional group and provide good water solubility and scope for further functionalization process. The advantage of green sources over chemical uh, entities, it do not require separate reactants or doping. So in previous case, we need to dope some, uh, if we want to dope uh, boron or if we have nitrogen something, we need to uh, add some chemicals. But in the green process, no need to adding any chemicals because already available in the uh, natural source. So do not require any separate reactants for the doping. Post modification or surface phosphorylation is needed. Presence of various carbohydrates, protein and other biomolecules are present in this uh, uh, leaves. Beside the fact that it's a low cost and green nature. So there are several uh, review articles and uh, uh, journals based on this preparation of uh, uh, dead leaves, derived activated carbon for electrochemical sensor application and uh, for carbon dot uh, preparation and uh, for sensing some biomolecules. Uh, I choose one of the one of the tree in our, our country, National Taiwan University, inside the campus. The Lucumber Formosa is commonly known as the Chinese sweet gum or Formosan gum. It, it, it shows the pyramid shape like around 40 to 60 feet wide and becomes more oval in the tree ages. The leaves are star shaped with the fragrant odor with the uh, when crushed. This color changes from green in the spring and the summer to turn to purple, red, or yellow in the fall. The dead leaves are to be collected and uh, used for the preparation of uh, activated carbon. This is the key material uh, I use, this uh, leaf, dead leaves. And this is the schematic representation for the sensing of nitro isomer. In previous case, I used the metal ions, uh, toxic metal ions. In this case, I use only the nitro isomer, the organic substance. These substances are, we are regularly using in the laboratory and chemical, chemical industry and uh, some other uh, companies because these uh, substances are highly toxic because the nitro compounds are easy to uh, spread over the air and water, highly water soluble. So this, the, these substances are dang dangerous to our human beings and animals. So we need to sense this type of uh, uh, nitro isomers uh, and uh, for the further uh, particular application. So I use this uh, Lucumber Formosa sweet gum tree. Uh, the collector that dead leaves, uh, two types of uh, leaves. One is the, the brown color, another is the green color leaves and uh, dried in air, uh, air and sunlight. And for the activation at 600 to 900 degrees centigrade nitrogen atmosphere, we get the porous carbon material. In this case, I use only the porous carbon without any uh, metal oxide or metal doping in, in this case. So I use only the porous carbon. This carbon is a very good uh, sensing of uh, electrochemical sensing of this uh, organic substances like uh, uh, three nitro aniline and uh, uh, three nitro, uh, three four nitro aniline and uh, uh, three uh, nitro, sorry, three nitros of benzene. This, uh, this carbon, these uh, substances are toxic and we have to sensing uh, one by one. Uh, after that preparation, I have to characterize the like, same like uh, XRD and uh, Raman spectroscopy. You can see the TM image of uh, the highly porous nature of uh, uh, activated carbon. So after the leaves are uh, carbonized and further uh, heating at uh, 600 to 900 degrees centigrade, you can see the porosity. This is the zoom view of the uh, uh, sample. You can see that this porosity is uh, used for the um, electron transfer and the uh, molecules uh, enter in this, in this carbon material and fast electron transfer and uh, high conductivity. 
So uh, this uh, after this characterization, uh, this uh, carbon material having give some uh, polar surfaces. Already I told some functional group present in this the carbon surface like uh, hydroxyl, car carbonyl, and uh, car carboxyl group. Is the electron is transfer like this? Uh, it donates one electron uh, and then proton. It, it converted into carbonyl group and carboxyl group is like this uh, and uh, carboxyl group like this. So these are the redox reactions happen on the surface of this carbon material. So this is the one of the highly conducting material and the high porosity material and the high pore volume. This uh, properties is facilitated for the sensing of uh, toxic substances. Uh, this is the electrochemical uh, electrochemical uh, profile for the sensing of uh, different uh, four, three nitroaniline, four nitroaniline, and uh, so and then mixing together. Sometimes these uh, these substances are separately they're individually sensing, and sometimes we can mix together in a particular ratio and mixing, and simultaneously we have to detect uh, uh, the four, four nitroaniline, three nitroaniline uh, substances. And this is the real sample uh, testing uh, for uh, individually and uh, simultaneously. And uh, sometimes the, or this organic substance is trace level detect in the brewage, that's orange juice and the pineapple jam. Uh, so, and uh, sometimes uh, we can to interference with the other substances like uh, nitrophenol and something. And we can get only the sensing, highly sensing this uh, three nitronyl and four nitronyl substances. Uh, this work was published in 2019 in ACS Omega. Uh, binder free modification. Binder free means we need to sometimes the researcher using some binders, but then in this case, we don't use any binder. It, it, is, it is directly binded on this uh, glassy carbon electrode. So that is means binder free modification of glassy carbon electrode by using porous carbon for automatic determination of nitro isomers. And another thing uh, recently we preferred. Uh, three metal ions with the sulfur doping. It's a strontium, iron, and nickel mixed with this thiourea. We get uh, uh, three metal doped uh, with the multi-valed carbon, single-valed uh, carbon additive. It's a robust modified electrode, electrochemical sensing of mercury 2 plus ion. The same method, but I, uh, I cannot use uh, porous carbon. In this case, I use only the single-valed carbon additive. Heating at 100, 100 degrees is integrated in two hours. I, and in the tube furnace, after cooling, we collect this composite, and this composite is tonication for a long one hour, and we get uh, this composite mixed with the single wall carbon tube. The, the this this the color balls indicates for the metal uh, metal ions, sorry metal uh, metal oxides, and another is uh, the the fiber like material is for the single wall carbon nanotube. and this composite further is for application of sensing uh, sensing of mercury two plus. Uh, this is the formation mechanism. First, the, this metal ions grinding and mixing in room temperature. And after that reduction in a tube furnace, uh, initially the 400 to 600 degrees is melting, the one by one the metal salt, and further nucleation at 800 and 900 degrees centigrade at high temperature. This nucleation is happened. Finally, the material, you can see the uh, all metal ions uh, together to form the composite material. So this composite is for sensing uh, mercury two plus, two plus ions. And uh, how it will sense? Because mercury is a toxic substance and uh, our composite have good sensors to sensing, uh, sensing this uh, metal ions. Uh, this is the bare GC. There is a no signal because there is a no composite. After introducing the composite, the signal will enhance. Uh, in this case, uh, the mercury is dropped into this uh, the solution and the, the signal will enhance. Uh, what happened is, uh, uh, what happened is during the electrochemical setup, the mercury two plus is converted into mercury zero and the electron to electron and two, uh, uh, two electron is uh, transferred from mercury two plus into mercury two reducing and further oxidation happen. So mercury and sulfur is one of the strongest, uh, strongest binding nature because it's tentatively to attract the mercury ions. So that's why I use the sulfur is doping for this uh, composite. And this paper is published in, in, in yesterday, this is June 10, in ACS Applied Electronic Materials in American Chemical Society. And nut cell waste. Another one is uh, uh, nut cell waste. It's a cheap bio waste material, low ash content, chemical activation using 
zinc chloride, potassium, and phosphoric acid yields higher surface area and high porosity. It is eco friendliness and no toxicity, and to produce a sustainable carbon material in a large scale. So we have uh, almost we need to prepare uh, 10 milligram, so 10 gram, uh, 10 milligram to 10 gram, and 100 gram of uh, the porous activated carbon using this uh, raw material. So there are several nut cells that are walnuts, almond, uh, 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 pista, and coconut and uh, groundnuts, groundnut cells. So in their part, it is essential. The outer part is the waste. So the waste materials are collected and used for further uh, applica sustainable applications. So nut cell derived carbon used for sensing uh, vitamin uh, B2, vitamin B2. So initially, the nut cells are collected and dry the nut cells and make it powder and uh, 100, uh, 100 micrometer in using this mesh. And uh, after uh, collecting this nut cell powder, uh, mixed with the potassium hydroxide, this is a chemical activation agent in nitrogen atmosphere. And we get at a high, at high temperature carbonization, we get the nut cell carbon. Uh, this carbon material is used for other application. In this case, I use uh, two, uh, two metal ions, it's a bimetallic nature. One is uh, palladium, another one is uh, copper, it's a uh, bimetallic nature. So because it's monometallic is somewhat, uh, sensing is less. In, in case some um, bimetallic or dry metallic or multimetallic nature, the synergetic effect uh, happen in, in itself and also fast electron transfer compared to monometallic uh, composite. So in this case, I use the um, bimetallic nature of uh, composite. So finally, we get the palladium uh, copper uh, at nut cell derived carbon. This uh, composite is used for the sensing of uh, uh, vitamin B2. So the vitamin B2 is one of the essential uh, vitamin. It uh, so we need to sensing uh, uh, it defi deficiency. It happen uh, the vitamin level is deficiency. We can uh, several problems happen in the human being. So we need to sensing this uh, vitamin. It's oxidized form. It's a reduced form. So the preparation process is over and you need to material characterization, XRD, Roman, and XPS, and the uh, extended X-ray diffraction pattern, nitrogen adsorption, and the h atom uh, techniques. So this is the XRD pattern and uh, nitrogen adsorption, desorption technique uh, for this uh, surface area calculation and uh, Raman spectroscopy and the FPS spectroscopy at the low temperature to high temperature. You can see the changes in the uh, structure of uh, a preferred material. And uh, how the bimetallic is formed is uh, uh, alloy type or uh, separate uh, type or coarser type. We, can, we need to analyze. So initially, there's a formation mechanism. This is the palladium astral estimate and uh, in, uh, inside this carbon material and uh, copper astral estimate. A micro uh, reduction uh, at lower temperature, the, the astral estimate group is leaving first and uh, the palladium 2 plus is reduced into palladium atoms. This astral astronaut is a secondary carbon source because this uh, astral astronaut is further, uh, uh, further converted into carbon. So this is the secondary carbon source in this case. Uh, after uh, reducing the palladium atom, nucleations uh, happen. So it will form a particular nanometer size. And second stage, the copper astral astronaut reduced it at uh, copper uh, 2 plus into copper 0. So in this case, this palladium uh, copper atoms attracted together uh, deposited on the surface of uh, uh, palladium atoms, we get the uh, copper palladium copper alloyed nanoparticle. You can see the alloy structure in detail. So this is the bare carbon. This is the bimetallic carbon composite. I can see the metallic nature. One one uh, one of the atom that is a carbon is the bot, uh, copper is the bottom and palladium is on the surface. You can see the mapping image. So we need to confirm whether the material uh, is uh, copper or palladium or some other metal are present or not. So we need to confirm the color mapping test. Uh, during the color mapping, the, the bright red color indicates for the uh, copper and the, the green color indicates for the palladium. So this virtual image, you can see the copper and uh, copper in a green color and the palladium is a red color. So you can see that the image is uh, the two metals are bind uh, in the formation of uh, alloy structure. So we need to confirm this uh, uh, light structure and further electrochemical characterization using this uh, um, composite uh, bare SPC that is uh, bare SPC and uh, a nut cell carbon, uh, nut cell uh, derived carbon 
and the palladium and single monometallic and finally the bimetallic. You can see the uh, electro emittance spectroscopy study. The final one is the highest uh, resistivity. Another, uh, you can see the plot diagram for the corresponding uh, EH profile. And this is a CV profile. And this is the pH analysis. The pH is very important to uh, sensing the biomolecules. So at a lower pH, uh, lower 5, 5, 5 to 9, the pH level increases, the peak will shift. Uh, that is uh, uh, some electrocatalytic reactions happen in this uh, uh, composite. And uh, this is a further uh, CV profile and uh, DPV studies and uh, some other interferences like uh, ascorbic acid, dopamine, and the vitamin B1, B2, and glucose, sodium, potassium, some interferences are mixed together. And uh, these interferences are, uh, uh, these interferences are uh, not uh, interfering in this uh, composite. So this paper was published in uh, Microchemical Act of 2019. That is a voltometric determination of vitamin B2 using highly porous carbon electrode modified with the palladium and the copper nanoparticles. And the next one is the fruit seeds. So the most abundant and the cheap precursor. So the fruit seeds, the, the same like the inner part, we can use essential. The, the outer layer or the outer part is the, the waste one. So we need to collect the waste part and use it for the key material for the preparation of activated carbon. So it contains a high sugar moiety and triacetyl glycerols, unsaturated and cyclopropanoid fatty acids. And also finally, it's a low cost precursor. So there are several researchers that are using the date seed and uh, some other uh, tamarind seed skin. They are using for the key material and preparation of activated carbon and used for the uh, supercapacitor like, supercapacitor application. So I use the KCO Pistilla Golden Shower uh, fruit cells. Uh, this tree is available in our uh, National University, National Taiwan University campus. So every every year, then uh, tens of uh, the fruit cells are uh, collected. Uh, these the, these fruit cells are uh, these fruit cells are waste material. So we collect this waste material for uh, using for utilization of sustainable application. So the golden shower, these fruits uh, fruits are collected. The pot powder is uh, we collect the pot powder, and this pot powder is further activation using the tube furnace. In the potassium hydroxide, uh, potassium hydroxide activation, we get the porous activated carbon. And this porous carbon activated carbon mixed with the platinum, acetyl acetate, rhenium for decaformyl uh, uh, complex. So this time, this time I used uh, two different uh, bimetallic, uh, uh, two different bimetals. One is the platinum, another one is the rhenium. This is a new type of uh, composite, and uh, this is uh, this composite sensing for uh, prosolidine uh, in uh, prosolidine substances. This is a schematic representation. Uh, I, I give the schematic representation. Uh, this is the preparation method. How the palladium, palladium acetate, and rhenium decaformyl dissolved in a benzyl ether because these two substances are so, uh, soluble in uh, organic solvent. So that's why I the benzyl ether is a suitable solvent for complete uh, solubility of these two uh, substances. And mix it together with the porous activated carbon and the uh, microwave reduction, we get uh, the uh, rhenium and the palladium is reduced with, and to form the uh, sorry, rhenium and the platinum, sorry, uh, platinum rhenium nanoparticle and dry, uh, finally dried in 80, 80 degrees centigrade, we get this composite. So this composite is used for characterization of the TEM image and find the whether it is a palladium, whether it's a platinum and whether it's a, a rhenium nanoparticle. And the yellow color indicates for uh, re, uh, platinum and the re, uh, red color indicates for the rhenium nanoparticle. You can see the very, very, very small size, uh, nearly two to three nanometer range of uh, rhenium nanoparticle deposit on this porous uh, activated carbon. And uh, this composite is uh, for the study for the uh, sensing of prosolidine, uh, linear sweep voltammetry and differential pulse voltammetry. We can study about the concentration ring and make it the plot. And from this plot, we can calculate the sensitivity and the limit of detection and the uh, linear range of uh, uh, sensing molecules. So this paper was published in the ACS Sustainable Chemistry in Engineering in 2020 recently. Uh, fabrication of platinum, rhenium, nanoparticle decorated porous carbons, voltammetric sensing of uh, prosolidin. So in this case, I use the fruit cells as the uh, carbon source for the preparation of a highly porous activated carbon. 
and uh, next for uh, sensing for this over next for uh, biomass fed carbon material for super capacitor applications so nowadays the capacitor super capacitor is one of the trend and many people is working in the material chemistry preparing several materials to uh, get the high capacitance value so uh, basing basically most of them using the carbon is the substance and they mix it with some metal ions multi metal ions and ferrous uh, gets so, so many things metal so many metal oxide and metal sulfides so this uh, combined with the uh, carbon material because the carbon is the highly conductive in nature so the key material is very important so i prepared the carbon from biomass so you can see the carbon uh, biomass Uh, is a green sustainable and high performance we need to collect several uh, biomass material and use it for the super capacitor application in china the trolley bus of leo technology they use the super capacitor material that is a nickel hydroxide in activated carbon is uh, uh, this composite is used for running a bus and another one is uh, uh, electric uh, tram car of uh, tram car used in the activated carbon super capacitor material so if you want to know some uh, details about this super capacitor and the biomass fed carbon you please go through this uh, chemical society review 2016 in rsc publication and what is the super capacitor is thematic illustration for the electrode configuration of two electrode configuration three electrode configuration this is a counter electrode reference electrode and the working electrode and so initially they used three electrode system but nowadays they are using only the two electrode system one is the active material another one is the uh, another active material in a separator you can put the electrolyte one is the porous carbon another one is the working electrode so this is the basic concept and nowadays the uh, super capacitor divided into uh, uh, three types mostly the electrical double layer capacitance pseudo capacitor and hybrid capacitor so electrical double layer means it separate into positive and negative pseudo capacitors the redox reactions happen and uh, hybrid material you can hear also the redox super capacitors happen so the schematic diagram on charging and discharging process you can see this uh, images and uh, in this figure indicate that number of uh, publications including title books and other research search on the super capacitor in keyword in google scholar can see the number of uh, data reported increasing 20000 about in the 2018 and number of publications mostly based on this carbon material and uh, lesser amount of publication based on this metal oxide and composite material so the carbon is very important for the uh, key material and used for the sustainable applications in super capacitors and moringa olefra is well known that uh, most of the people using this uh, uh, drumstick for uh, cooking purpose so it leaves and seeds bark roots and so flowers are widely used in traditional medicine sometimes the leaves used as a food products in human nutrition moringa olefra leaves possess a wide range of uh, additional biological activities including anti accident anti accident and uh, tissue protective uh, that is the liver kidney heart and lungs analgesic and uh, anti ulcer and anti hyper then hypertensive etc so this is a medicinal purpose some of the people is using some of the people is nutrition and our people the chemistry people and research people using it contains uh, polyphenols polyphenolic acids flavonoids cellulose fibers and chemicellulose and lignin so these chemicals these uh, substances this moiety is important for the preparation of activated carbon so i choose this um, moringa olefra as a key material for the preparation of uh, activated carbon so i collected the moringa olefra and uh, make it in small pieces at, and choke in the small pieces at a heated at a microwave radiation to 100 degrees centigrade and this proof cell powder mixed with the uh, uh, potassium hydroxide uh, and uh, heating at 600 to 900 degrees centigrade and activation finally we get the moringa olefra activated carbon and mix it with this ruthenium acetate as a metal precursor and for the treatment of uh, Uh, thermal reduction we get uh, uh, this composite ruthenium doped moringa olefra carbon and uh, this carbon material used for the super capacitor application uh, this is the tm image and uh, uh, you can see the bare image of uh, carbon material and uh, the, the white circle indicates for the ruthenium nanoparticle deposited on the high surface area of carbon material uh, you can see this image the carbon is holded the ruthenium particle 
uh, you can see the carbon, carbon, this is the carbon layer, and this is the ruthenium particle. It tightly holds on this particle uh, during the uh, activation process and also the uh, thermal treatment. So, uh, this the table indicates for uh, physical uh, characterization, that is, a physical uh, characterization of uh, uh, this prepared carbon material. So, MOC 600, 700, 800, 900, different temperature are heated. Uh, this is the heating temperature and loading amount of ruthenium. Uh, I use the two type of loading, 1.0 and 1.5. The surface area is uh, simultaneously increases uh, 7, 780 and 1384 and uh, nearly 2000 and 2500 something. After doping this uh, ruthenium nanoparticle, somewhat uh, surface area is, uh, the total surface area is reduced because this uh, ruthenium nanoparticle is uh, doped on this uh, porous carbon material. So that's why the, the surface area is somewhat lower compared to the bare nanomaterial. So I prepared the Molina Infra, and it's a higher surface area, nearly 2,522 meters square per gram of surface area. And the four, total pore volume is 1.7 nanometer. So this, uh, this facility, this uh, type of uh, material is uh, helpful for uh, supercapacitor super or energy storage applications. So this is the uh, zinc chloride activation uh, process. So that this, this composite is published in 2016, uh, scientific report, the uh, nature publication. Ruthenium nanoparticle decorated on curved like porous carbon material for high performance supercapacitor, high performance supercapacitor. So this is schematic uh, representation of synthesis. And the sugar cane, next one is the sugar cane. Sugar cane is, uh, Sugarcane is a rich uh, carbon source for carbohydrates. Uh, green leaves, uh, uh, the food is green leaves and top portion. Uh, this uses a fuel residue and waste material. Uh, it uses the chemical industry, alcohol, baggage, and press mat. Sugarcane baggage, uh, nearly 25% of cellulose and 45% of hemicellulose and the lignin material. Sugarcane juice in natural sugars and found essential vitamins and minerals. According to the United States, United States Department of Agriculture Newton database, it contains trace amount of calcium, iron and magnesium, potassium and zinc, thiamine and uh, riboflavin. So this is the essential elements for uh, human beings. So this sugar can I use for the key material for the preparation of activated carbon. So this paper was published in 2016 in Physical Chemistry, Chemical Physics in the RSC publication. That is the title, Functional Porous Carbon Zingoxin Nanocomposites for High Performance Biosensor and Energy Storage Applications. And then paper flower derived porous carbons with the high capacitance by chemical and the physical activation for sustainable applications. So this is the paper flower, this is inside the canvas. So every day uh, we have to collect several uh, dead flowers in the campus in different season. So I collect this paper flower. It contains the dye pigment and also a uh, rich, uh, rich content of carbon. So that's why I choose this uh, precursor for the carbon. Uh, so this is a paper flower. The name is uh, Bogavinila spectroblast is a botanical name. And I collected this paper flower and dry make it and then uh, mix it with zinc chloride at 100 degrees centigrade in a microwave radiation, uh, two type of uh, 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 heating. That is one is uh, 700, another one is 800 degrees centigrade. Uh, during heating, in a, uh, this time I use the physical activation. That means the carbon, uh, carbon dioxide used for this uh, activation at a higher temperature, uh, like 700 and 800 degrees centigrade. And this final composite is used for dual application. One is a super capacitor, another one is uh, uh, Another one is the uh, dye adsorption studies. So this is a FPR spectra and the DGS spectra and the XRD and the Raman spectra of preferred material. And and 
another one is the we sir hello sorry for interruption sir sir you are not audible sir sir hello sir hello sir hello you are not audible sir hello Already told that. and <laughs> Okay. Hello, Sorry. this person is again on the screen. Hello, sir, are you audible? Hello, sir, you are not audible again. Hello. Hello. Hello, sir. The speech is not clear. Hello. Sir, you can unmute yourself. Sir, you can unmute yourself. Hello. Sir, am I audible? Hello. Sir, there is a.
So, schematic illustration for the preparation of application of uh, rhenium uh, doped carbon dioxide activated carbon. This is the schematic proof. The எலக்ட்ரோகெமிக்கல் சென்சிங் ஆஃப் uh nil sunset yellow dye so this dye is uh, mostly used in the previous so it's a yellow color substance this substance we need to detect simultaneously uh, sensing and super capacitor application 
So finally, the the composite is prepared over. Is go for next characterization like uh, X-ray diffraction pattern and Raman spectroscopy, uh, thermogrammetric analysis, and the surface area measurements. And after this characterization, this uh, composite is for next uh, supercapacitor and uh, sensing application. So in this case, you can see the uh, carbon derived carbon only the carbon material. It is a highly porous nature and a high porosity. Uh, and also several carbon layers that is the graphitic layers arranged in a, in a manner and uh, this is the bare carbon without any metal doping and next uh, uh, six uh, TM, tm images are uh, rhenium doped uh, carbon material so you can see the black dots very very small black dots indicates for the rhenium nanoparticle it is a highly distributed the carbon surface that means the rhenium is highly distributed and overall the carbon and also this composite is a highly conductive nature that's why we are using two type of application one is an electrochemical sensor another one is an energy storage application and the right hand side you can see the single image that is a single uh, rhenium atom is it serves a, a hexagonal shape and uh, you can see the layers of distance of two layer uh, layer of uh, two atoms so zero point uh, 0, 0 0.2041 nanometer so it is a highly perfectly arranged manner so this uh, he further analyze the fft technique uh, these are the characterization technique uh, this uh, composite material so after characterization we can up next for the electrochemical uh, studies the cyclic voltammetry is used to uh, study about the uh, current and uh, current value and the lower one is the cd cdac it's a carbon carbon material only the carbon material after doping with this rhenium the, the current value somewhat increases. That means the conductivity is higher uh, higher than this uh, bare carbon material. This is uh, EIS profile, that is the impedance electros, uh, impedance, uh, in, uh, electrochemical impedance spectroscopy studies, and the same like a scan rate and uh, uh, pH studies is further that. And uh, this composite is further used for electrochemical sensing, that's a sunset yellow. Uh, what happened the sunset yellow after uh, uh, dipping in a uh, uh, electrochemical solution and the, uh, the, after passing the current, the hydroxyl group is converted to the uh, carbonyl group, that is, uh, OH is converted to O. That is, the electron is uh, transferred during this uh, uh, electrochemical studies. And uh, sensing application is over. This is the capacitance application. The same like uh, we need to measure the CV. You can see the rectangular type. Uh, uh, rectangular type is the CV profile. It indicates where it's open for uh, potential window for uh, uh, energy storage application. So the bare carbon has the capacitance in nearly 120, and rhenium doped uh, different uh, uh, ratio of rhenium doped is so one weight percentage, two weight percentage. Uh, the rhenium one weight percentage is higher than a rhenium uh, two percentage because this uh, higher loading of rhenium.
dear participants dear participants kindly bear with the interruption this is person will join shortly हाँ इप्पम है ना हेलो हाँ इप्पम है आप वाले ट्रेनिंग है ना इंग्लिश का वाले से हाँ हाँ वाले से ना निकले आई थिंक ओके हेलो हाँ हाँ सुनो हाँ सुनो मेरा हेलो हाँ क्या करेंगे ना हेलो हाँ क्या करेंगे क्या करेंगे हाँ क्या करेंगे शेयर आई हाँ ओके 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 थैंक यू Sorry, this paper was published in Electrochemical Act of 2018, and uh, overall the research progress on porous carbon-supported metal oxide and metal nanomaterial for supercapacitor electron application. Recently published in a review article in uh, Industrial Engineering and Chemical Research and ACS publication. So you want to go through uh, so, uh, go through some uh, literature or some you need to uh, schematic representation or mechanism. Of uh, supercapacitor energy storage, you go through this review article and you can this helpful for you. Uh, this paper is published in 2020. And another one, the book chapter, uh, the biomass derived composite for energy storage. Uh, this book chapter published in Material Research Foundation 2020 recently. Uh, and this book chapter also uh, compresses that uh, um, most of the biomass material and how to prepare the carbon material and this carbon material how to use fabrication with this electrode and how we can uh, uh, 
calculate the energy storage and the capacitance value and so many equations and some calculations are there if you want to invest you go through this book chapter and it is helpful for your research purpose and so what next so almost i prefer the super capacitor and uh, uh, energy so energy uh, electrochemical sensing uh, electrochemical sensing work now what's the next uh, synthesis of high surface air carbon from uh, crab brown cells thick skin bones bird feather egg cell membrane human urine human fingernails and human hair so i choose uh, only the human hair because the human hair contains uh, some uh, uh, chemical formula that is the uh, it so it has uh, carbon and hydrogen and the sulfur uh, elements so it is uh, helpful for making uh, carbon and is useful for several application in previous case uh, this uh, human hair used for several uh, type of uh, applications that's uh, energy storage you can see in the green chemistry 2016 the human hair is a bit, uh, mixed with, uh, in the, put in the ball milling and extracted the juice this human hair powder is further for metal nanoparticle doping and decorated on the surface and used for catalysis that is a a is converted into b so this compound is used for a catalysis purpose and uh, some uh, urine uh, human urine samples is collected it can it shows 95 percentage of water and two percentage of urea and some other uh, metal ions are present in this uh, trace level so this uh, urine sample is extracted and concentrated into uh, a very low volume and then uh, this uh, concentrated uh, urine is used for uh, preparing the porous carbon material and used for several applications you can see this uh, uh, urine material step one the first of urine and this, uh, the salt is uh, removed and this, this salt is uh, helpful for making porosity and for higher temperature high temperature heating or carbonization we get it, it creates the pore so the, the pores is helpful for the electrochemical uh, sensor and the electrocatalytic reaction this is a hydroxyl ion is converted to uh, oxygen atom this is a fuel cell applications and another one is the carbon nanorod urine urine material is concentrated in uh, uh, recycling this uh, carbon nano dots is for sensing of uh, mercury 2 plus uh, and uh, it's a uh, nanomolar uh, level and the super capacitor application so the human hair is a pre carbonization and this is a pre treated carbon this uh, carbon is mixed with the potassium hydroxide carbonization at a high temperature we get the super capacitor application so this uh, paper was published in energy environment since 2014 in uh, 2014 and a direct methanol fuel cell some of the research are using the this material is a key material for the preparation of a carbon uh, first the carbonization and doping with the iron chloride we get the, some composite another is the palladium platinum is doping this material used for after the deduction reaction so already told the human hair having alpha helix keratin is one of the protein it contains uh, hydrogen nitrogen carbon and oxygen material so no need to doping of external chemical that is uh, sulfur and nitrogen so already is a sulfur nitrogen present in this uh, hair so we we, we want doping uh, any extra uh, add, additional reagent that's why this uh, this material is a key material for the preparation of activated carbon and lithium sulfur batteries and lithium ion batteries and lithium ion storage so many people are using the human hair and using as a key material for the several kind of uh, sustainable applications so i my thought uh, my research is mainly based on this material is collected so i use uh, the human hair and the human using the saving blade so this is a waste material so i collected these two material because this blade contains the iron oxide and the uh, uh, human hair contains only the carbon material so mix, mixed together we get uh, carbon doped with the iron oxide material this material is further using for uh, sustainable applications so impacts of waste blade on health so the, we are using this uh, uh, blade as a waste and this uh, this blade can in chemical poisoning through the chemical inhalation sometimes uh, the, the rust is uh, uh, toxicity and iron overload can lead hemochromatosis which can lead liver heart and pancreatic damage as well as the diabetes so early symptoms of including the weight weight loss and joint pain excessive iron is the the this is the oxide the iron oxide is ne never recommended for digestion it can lead to stomach problem and vomiting and other issues and sometimes the cancer and the neurological disease 
So we need to avoid this kind of uh, disease. We need to uh, use this blade as a useful form. The waste form is converted into useful form. So sometimes deposing the blades, it is too much risk of your kids and uh, your sanitation workers and let's be honest to yourself. So when you are throwing the, away the blades, regardless of the method, mention blow, please do so with care. Three options for uh, disposing safety blades, make a blade bank and buy a blade bank or recycle my, my blades. So I use the third option, recycle my blades. So after disposal of these blades, I use uh, this blade is uh, a blade mixed with some acid and it's a dissolution. Uh, this dissolution is containing iron content. The iron is used for the uh, doping of uh, iron nanoparticles. So this is thematic representation of uh, preparing of my future work. I collected the human care and the blades. Uh, the human care carbonization and activated at a higher temperature, we get the carbon source. The blades are dissolution and precipitation. What do you mean the dissolution means? It uh, dipped into the concentrated acid. The blade is completely dissolved and uh, it is separated in the metal salt and precipitated using some precipitating agent and we get this complex used for a metal source. So no need to uh, buying any chemicals from the uh, uh, from the industry or company. Only we can use the iron oxide by using this uh, uh, waste blade. And nowadays, now two type of uh, sources are available. One is the carbon source, another one is the metal source. This may carbon and the metal source combined together, we get the magnetic nanocomposite. So this composite uh, used for catalysis sensor and waste water remediation. So the hair containing uh, hair containing the rich uh, protein, it is a keratin. It is converted into uh, carbon material, uh, carbon layered material. And the metal, that is a dissolution of these blades, it's also a metal source. We can get the magnetic composite. How uh, we need to prepare the uh, activated carbon from human hair and the rest of the blade? So, the left hand side, you can clean with water and ethanol and acetone and the waste blades and nearly cut into size 0 0.5 to 1 centimeter level and dried in 800 degree in uh, dry air oven and heated at 300 degree nitrogen and mercury. It's a pre heat treatment. The completely the hair fibers are completely charred or partially carbonized. This uh, carbonized material mixed with the 10 percentage of potassium hydroxide and 20 ml, 25 ml and heated in 900 degrees in nitrogen atmosphere, we get the fully activated, uh, that's the car activated carbon fully carbonized. So this carbon contains highly porosity and also highly uh, carbon, uh, graphitic carbon layers. And the, the green color is the razor blades, the waste blades, say, like uh, clean with the soap water and acetone, and 10 ml of concentrated HCl at 600 to 700 degree we heat, we get the green color solution. That means the iron is coming from this blade, it's it converted to Fe2 Fe plus or Fe3 plus in nature. So the green color nature, the composition of iron is 35 to 45 percentage, and the remaining the chromium and the carbon is trace elements are present in this solution. So after mixing this uh, uh, solution with the liquid ammonia, it precipitates as iron hydroxide. It is a precipitation method. In his, the first one is the dissolution method. Second one is the precipitation method. The pH level is seven, 7 to 8. It completely comes out uh, iron, iron hydroxide. It's iron hydroxide further heating, we get the iron oxide nanoparticle. Uh, so the, finally, we get uh, iron oxide though with a human derived activated carbon. So this composite is used for further next sustainable application. This is my next project. And finally, I'm going to summary. Metal nanoparticles like nickel, ruthenium, platinum, palladium, copper, and uranium, zinc oxide have been successfully prepared and immobilized on the carbon matrix with good dispersion, showing high electrocatalytic activity for sensor and energy storage application. So the carbon-based electrodes are prepared by a simple crystal road from biomass feedstock. It's not only feedstock, it's an economical and also eco-friendly method. The cheapness and availability of these reagents and easy and clean workup and good high yields max method attractive for large high scale op uh, operations. So utilization of this uh, facile and economical biomass conversion approach is uh, to get the porous, highly porous carbon. We need the highly porous carbon from biomass is expected to open new routes for further sustainable applications. So that's why I use the porous carbon material is a key key material and the key compound is used for uh, sensor, uh, electrochemical sensor and supercapacitor and catalysis and uh, fuel cell applications.
So finally, I sincerely thanks to uh, Jayarachana Piping College for women or all faculty members and the felicitation of the uh, genius uh, Jayesh Rani and principal of this uh, college. And uh, I most uh, uh, sincere thanks to uh, my uh, one of my colleague and uh, uh, Dr. A. Mary, Mary Melda J. Selin, Associate Professor and Head of the Department and Organizing Secretary and all faculty members and the Organizing Committee. Thank you one and all. Thank you, sir. Now the floor is open for any queries. You can post your queries in the chat box now. Dear participants. So there is a question oh. from a participant. Whether it is necessary to wash the hair with the hair with the yes. so right? Mm -hmm. yes. I think. Yeah, this necessary to wash ethyl ethanol because some uh, dust, uh, some dirty particles are absorbed on the human hair. So we need uh, completely clean and use for further uh, treatment. Thank you. Another question, sir. When metals like ruthenium integrated on uh, PC metal, goes to nanoscale or not? This is one question asked by one participant. Mm. Yeah, when metals like ruthenium impregnated on PC metal goes to nanoscale or not? Mm. Ruthenium metal is, uh, we need to, uh, this uh, we need to convert first metal into metal salt. Then only easy to attract the carbon material, carbon surface. Because already I told, carbon surface has some polar groups, hydroxyl and carboxyl and amine group. Um, yeah. Directly we putting the metal, it's not easy to uh, impregnate into the porous carbon. If you convert it to metal into metal salt, it's easy to attract the carbon surface and easy to penetrate the porous uh, carbon materials. Then only we get the zero size, that is zero, uh, zero dimension, that is a, a very, very low size of a nanoparticle formation. Otherwise, uh, only the bulk, uh, that is a 100 nanometer, 200 nanometer range of nano, nanomaterial deposited on the surface. That is that, that kind of composite is uh, uh, no use uh, for uh, any application, only just we prepared the uh, composite. Whatever you preparing the material is a very fine nanoparticle and high surface area and high porosity. It will be uh, useful for sustainable application because uh, particle size very very low. That is a low size, uh, uh, less less than 10 nanometer. It will have high surface area. The particle size is very low. The surface area is more. You see, the more surface area is favorable for uh, any kind of application, either sensor or catalysis or supercapacitor or uh, fuel cell application. Okay, sir. Is, is, is it possible? Uh, to, to use this carbon as solid yeah, yeah. support for catalyst. Yeah, yeah. Possibly use this carbon as a solid support for catalyst because uh, nano usually metal nanoparticles also use for uh, catalysis. But after the reaction, the metal nanoparticles are aggregation. 
so we cannot separate from the reaction mixture that's why any support either silica or alumina or carbon we we put this metal nano particle it is strongly uh, adsorbed or deposit on this uh, support like a carbon and after the reaction mixture we can we can separate separately because it centrifuges uh, are deposited a long time the material is deposited in the bottom and we can centrifuge at a particular rpm uh, residue that is uh, the catalyst we can we can separate from the reaction mixture otherwise uh, use only the bare metal nano particle we cannot uh, uh, separate the reaction mixture that's why any support either silica alumina or carbon uh, we, as a support material for catalytic purpose otherwise the, we cannot con the conversion is not good uh, for uh any reaction okay thank you what is the size of synthesis with carbon porous so the carbon material we need to synthesize uh, nearly 200 nanometer 300 nanometer range but it it must uh, high surface area and high porosity that is very important so the size of nanoparticle is, uh, is not, not much uh, just only we need uh, high surface area and high porosity Okay. Uh, the rust which contains iron oxide can be used to synthesis of nanoparticle. Yeah, uh, but we need to separate uh, the rust contain iron oxide and the blade contain iron oxide and some chromium, some other metals. But the particular pH, we maintain the pH 7 to 8, only the iron is comes out uh, iron oxide, iron hydroxide. Further in heating the iron hydroxide, it converted into pure uh, iron oxide nanoparticle. Otherwise, some contamination is there. So some somebody asking why we are not precipitating this uh, material is can use directly this uh, blade as a uh, iron uh, source, but it is it is difficult to analyze whether it's contain iron oxide or chromium oxide. That's why the precipitation method is important for separating only the iron oxide nano okay. Another question. How to convert activated charcoal into highly porous material by simple method? So I told that's just a zinc chloride is one of the simplest method because of potassium hydroxide sometimes it is harmful to burning that uh, furnace tip because at high temperature potassium is emitted from the uh, carbon material and heating the the quartz tip so quartz tip is totally damaged. So in order to avoid this kind of uh, a treatment you just put uh, zinc chloride mixed with the our uh, charcoal at a particular temperature stirring and heating and we and then finally heat into uh, carbonization at a lower temperature nearly 600 we get a little, little bit surface uh, high surface area nearly uh, 600 to 700 meter square per gram we get the porous carbon material this is the simplest way if you want to go for a higher application like a fuel cell or storage like energy storage you need the high surface area carbon material. Then you go for higher temperature, 900 or 1000 or 1200 degrees centigrade. We get a pure carbon and also a highly graphitic carbon. We can get uh, this method. If you want to go for small uh, small application like a uh, catalysis or some sensor, just mixing the zinc chloride is, uh, is enough. Okay. Who is the, how to convert? Biomass uh, resources, if they contain sulfur, they are asked. Yeah, yeah but uh, sulfur is uh, very, very tra trace amount. Sometimes the heating at a higher temperature, sul sulfur is go out as a sulfur dioxide because already the oxygen is present in the, some carbon material. Sulfur reacted with the sulfur dioxide. But the human hair, uh, where he, uh, it's the strongest one. The sulfur and nitrogen binding is very strong. So at uh, argon atmosphere, uh, in heating an or argon atmosphere, the compound is completely nitrogen and sulfur doped with uh, composite. Composite is obtained. That's why we are using the uh, sulfur uh, as a, one of the important ones. Why are you using sodium, sodium potassium hydroxide agent? They have asked one question. Yeah, uh, surface modification, we use uh, potassium hydroxide or some uh, phosphoric acid, uh, some zinc chloride or potassium chloride or potassium carbonate. So whatever you want, 
uh, you must clean the after carbonization you must clean or a removal of uh, the potassium ions or some other uh, element uh, some other metal ions you are using completely remove because this metal ions sometimes interfering your uh, electrochemical sensing of uh, electrochemical sensing for or energy storage sensing for this metal ions is in the preferring that's why we need to completely uh, remove from this uh, uh, carbonization process do you find any biological application from your nano composite because all are coming from nature yeah another group is working on uh, uh, nano, nano uh, carbon nano dots same like method i use only the sensor and catalysis and the energy storage uh, another group of our our lab they are working in a carbon nano dots uh, carbon nano dots derived from uh, uh, waste carbon materials so they are they using uh, sensing application bioimaging and cell uh, imaging technique so they are working separately uh, we are working separately okay so recycling of nano materials possible yeah recycling that's why uh, i i told initially the recycling is very important matter uh, recycling process we need to use the turnover and the turnover uh, turnover number and turnover cycle it is uh, helpful for uh, in catalysis area but uh, energy storage and uh, uh, sensor application we need to fabricate again and again and the sensing capacitance is uh, somewhat uh, decreasing because uh, one time you are using the sensing uh, or energy storage the charge and discharge process uh, the, the material some sometimes is degraded so we need to avoid uh, the degradation uh, we need to avoid some extra chemical or extra metal oxide we need to add and we get the stability okay thank you So the silicon silicon porous material is superior silicon porous species. material yeah not superior because silicon porous material sometimes we need to use acid as uh, acid in this reaction mixture the silicon is come out uh, silicon dioxide or something so corrosive nature happen when using the silica but carbon is a no corrosive in acid tre uh, base treatment that's why the carbon is very stable in acid and base uh, condition and also high temperature condition if you want to mix with the air only the carbon dioxide and the carbon monoxide is only liberate otherwise the carbon is very highly stable but in the case of silicon uh, if mixed with some acid or some base it completely dissolution or completely convert into another form so that's why we need to avoid the silicon only we use only the carbon okay whether heavy metals destroy the pore size or pore volume they have asked Metal. It's not clear. Uh, yeah, yeah. Is it possible to achieve two two thousand meter per gram? Yeah, I achieved two thousand five hundred, nearly three thousand. So that uh, that report is not published. So you may be going to publish uh, nearly uh, because uh, the condition is very critical. Uh, we need, we need to avoid the air uh, during the carbonization and pretreatment. So many pretreatment is there. and if we, we get the finally very small amount of carbon but it's a, a high porosity but our laboratory uh, people's going to achieve large scale uh, synthesis of a high, highly activated carbon with a high surface area so i try my best level is nearly 2800 uh, 25 meters square per gram so not uh, reached up to 3000 okay. i try to my best level This is the most effective method for the synthesis of nano catalyst. They have asked one of the questions. Most effective methods. Most effective method to destroy. To synthesis nano catalyst. So we are using the KOH reagent. so koh reagent is a, a easy to penetrate the carbon lattice already i told in a separate diagram mm -hmm. how the potassium hydroxide activation method mm -hmm. so potassium ions are easy to intercalate in the carbon lattice and uh, uh, make it the high surface area after uh, washing with the acid it completely comes out as a potassium chloride so that's why we are using a potassium hydroxide as a uh, activation agent usually other uh, activation uh, chemical activation like zinc chloride phosphoric acid something only we get uh, 1000 to uh, 1500 meters square per gram of surface area but 
potassium hydroxide is uh, using they are we get uh, nearly uh, 3000 uh, meter square per gram surface area that's why we are people are using potassium hydroxide is activation agent okay uh, whether heavy metal destroy the pore size and pore volume i think so we, we tried many metals but it, uh, i cannot uh, get any uh, uh, bad results because um, most of them uh, 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 create the pores most of the metal ions creates the pores not destroy the destroy the pore size and pore volume if uh, some uh, heating at a higher temperature nearly uh, 1500 or 1300 the carbon uh, layers completely destroy because the carbon is uh, arranged in the benzene like uh, structure that is a graphic structure at a higher temperature the the carbon uh, is broke break and uh, destroy so not only the uh, heavy metals uh, can destroy the pore size and pore volume okay thank you uh, can we use uh, carbon sensors to find a way to food uh, adulteration food adulteration carbon sensors to find uh, wet food adulteration Uh, yeah, we are using the real, uh, real uh, application, real sample sensor. Yeah. Already, I used the fish and the milk material mm -hmm. and some fruit jam and some other material. So it is possible to sensing the, our carbon material for a uh, uh, food, uh, food adaptation. It, it is very simple, but we need to uh, s s prepare the real sample procedure in in a separate form, and we need to search. Uh, uh, what kind of food and what kind of uh, uh, sensing we are need to uh, identify first. Okay. Instead of waste blade, we can use some other metal rich iron, iron uh, rich in iron. Yeah, uh, I use only the waste blade, but uh, what kind of, I don't know what kind of uh, use of some other metal uh, containing the uh, iron, rich of iron. Yeah. You can how to choose uh, hair or any blade? Any criteria for uh, any criteria that you have made? I think it's, it's no, no, no need to choose. Whatever you are available in the hair material, you just you collect and wash it and dry. So no need to search for this pure hair or some bad hair not like that. Mm -hmm. So if you want to collect any material and then uh, you can make it uh, clear from any dirt particles or some other sometimes uh, some hair having the dye dye the people are using some dyes so we need to avoid the dye or uh, we need to avoid some coloring agent just to mix it with some ethanol or some other organic solvent easy to uh, separate from this uh, hair that's why we're using some ethanol solvent for cleaning okay okay thank you very much for uh, the for giving your uh, clear clear answer to the questions of the participants. Yes. Uh, the link, yes. dear participant, link is given for you to give the your attendance. Yes. Okay. Now we are going to have a close to the webinar session of the first day. May I invite Reverend Sister Sahai Linus, the Assistant Professor of Chemistry, the Organizing Secretary of the webinar, to propose vote of thanks. Good afternoon, everybody. Give thanks to the Lord for He is good. Though it is formal, it is our way of expression to show our gratitude. Firstly, I would like to thank God Almighty for the success of first day webinar without any hindrances. It's my immense pleasure to thank our research person, Dr. Pichaymani Virakumar, Research Associate Professor of Chemistry, National Daiwan University, Daiwan, who enlightened us by his talk on porous carbon-based nanocomposite for energy storage and sensing. It helped us to know about the biomass pyrolysis, past, present, and future, physical and chemical activation, and also explain eco-friendly method. Then how to produce sustainable activated carbon materials from acro-waste and bio-waste by using electrochemical sensor. 
then biomass derived carbon materials for supercapacitors derived porous carbons with high capacitance by chemical and physical activation for sustainable application sir you have elaborated the more useful simple techniques which can be adopted for the study of sensing the usage of green materials for the research is highly appreciable i assure you that your deliberation will surely inculcate in research interest among the young chemist sir the participants are very much benefited by your informative lecture words are not enough to tell you that how this session is going to help us in shaping our curriculum on behalf of the management and the participants and on my own behalf i thank you sir for your wonderful and vivid presentation i am delighted to thank our principal dr sister s j surani and our secretary mother superior dr sister p j queensley jayanti for their motivation and blessings to organize the inter international webinar i am pleased to thank dr a mary imelda j c lee the convener head and associate professor of chemistry for her untiring efforts taken from from the day of planning till now in organizing this webinar successfully thank you ma'am i am very glad to accord my profound thanks to dr sister josie cha head and associate professor of computer science and technical assistant ms bhuvana for their technical support to, to this webinar it's my pleasure to thank the participants from various colleges and universities all over the world for their enthusiastic participation thank you one and all thank you thank you sister thank you very much the, for the for the lively interaction and the, the, you, the dear participants you made the day very successful one you can uh, give your attendance to the link which is provided in the chat box uh, tomorrow there is a little change in the timings we will start the program the second day webinar at 10:30 am the link will be open from 10 am onwards thank you